you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17 this morning. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Last night, I'm sorry. Oh, Children's Church. Let's let the Children's Church head on upstairs. Thank you for waving at me. Okay. Children, while you're finding your spot, we're going to let the kids head upstairs. That usually takes out about a third of the congregation, don't it? Praise God for that. I am so glad to see young people and children in church. All right. Last night, I had it completely in my mind what I was going to do today. Oh man, it just fits so good. It looked like it was going to be excellent. Came in this morning, went down to my office and sat down and I was going to write some stuff and God said, leave it alone. Don't take no notes. Don't write anything. You're going to do what I tell you to do today. I still had it in my mind what I was going to do. And then he sent a messenger to me this morning to talk with me and it completely changed the direction that this that this sermon is going to go. It's going to be from the same chapter in the same book, but it's directed in a different way, and I'm going to preach it the way God gives it to me. I don't have a thing to go on, but we're going to fire from the hip and let the Holy Spirit do the work this morning. Here in 1 Samuel chapter 17, the Israelites had a bitter enemy that had oppressed them for a great long time called the Philistines. They were bigger, they were more powerful, they were oppressive, they were ungodly. They did everything they could to destroy Israel. Perhaps this morning you've walked in here and the Lord showed me that somebody in here needs to hear this, maybe a bunch of you do, that you are under attack as well. You feel like your home is under attack, your marriage is under attack, your body is under attack, your soul is under attack, and it's done by a big, powerful army that's brutal and shows no quarter. Well, I want you to understand today that that's not the end of the story, and there is something that can help you and can help you defeat this. And I'm going to share that with you. Now, the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shoko that belongs to Judah. And they pitched between Shoko and Azekah and Ephes Daman. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched in the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. You know what Israel was doing? They were going through the motions. They didn't have any intent on attacking the enemy and fighting the enemy, but they wanted, to, they, they wanted to at least look brave, and they got out there and they put their armies up on one hill, and the other armies of the enemy was on the other hill, and they were at least going to try to make a good show, but they didn't have any way in the world to defeat what was coming. Maybe this morning you showed up to church, and you think, well, maybe I'm just going through the motions today uh, with all of the stuff that's going on in my life and all of the attacks that I'm under, but it at least I'm going to come to church and I'm going to sit in the pew and I'm going to at least make a show. Well, bless your heart if you have. That's all right. You're in the best place in the world you could be right now. And it said the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side and there was a valley between them. Thank God for that valley sometimes. It gives you a little distance from the devil. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Here, the, 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 the Philistines got the top man they had, a giant by the name of Goliath, who, by the way, six cubits and a span, he was nine feet, six inches tall. Most people say that if you take proportionately of how they're supposed to weigh. Oh, and by the way, I looked at a chart, and, and, and if I was the same height of what I weigh right now, I'd be about seven and a half feet tall. <laughs> but Goliath, they guessed that his weight was, if he was slender, was 475 pounds. 
And so they sent out their champion. They sent out the best they had to attack the nation of Israel. I want you to understand that the devil's got his champions too. And he's aiming them right at you. And he's bringing out the biggest, ugliest, loudest, most hateful one that he can come up with to attack each and every one of y'all this morning. And many of you have already looked him in the eye and wondered what on earth am I going to do? How in the world am I going to get through what I'm going through right now? And it said he had a helmet of brass on his head and, and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. It's more than what you weigh. The armored jacket that he had on is more than what you weigh. Maybe the armor that the devil is coming at you with is more than what you weigh this morning. And he had a greaves of brass upon his leg and a target of brass between his shoulders and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and the spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron and one bearing a shield went before him. That looks pretty doggone undefeatable, don't it? The, the spearhead, anybody ever picked up a spearhead before? Maybe some of you found one in the, uh, the woods digging, you know, or you've seen one in a museum. Well, this thing weighed, the side, weighed as much as a bowling ball. And if you don't think that's big, take you a long pole, tie a bowling ball to the end of it and see if you can hold it right there and see if you can throw it. You can't. And on top of that, he had a man carrying a shield walking in front of him. What in the world is a nine foot six, four hundred and seventy-five pound man need with somebody walking in front of him with a shield? It's a good thing that I'm not that size because somebody would have been done kill me by now. Because I, I got the mouth to go with that. But here he had somebody walking in front of him with a shield. And it said, he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said to them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine and you servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. What a horrible, scary thing. You got to understand that people back in those days were about this tall. The, a grown man was about this tall right here. Saul was about six feet tall and it said he stood head and shoulders above everybody else. And so the Israelites were little bitty men. And here's a nine foot, six inch tall man down there hollering, why are you even bothering to set your battle up? Bring your man, your champion down here and let him fight with me. What a horrible, scary thing that is to hear. And you might be hearing that from the devil this morning. You might feel pretty doggone small because of what you're facing right now because what you're facing seems so big, so tall, and so tough. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we'll be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you will be our servants and serve us. There's a, some big stakes on the line right now with what you're going through. The devil is challenging each and every one of you because of the situation that you're in. And he's telling you, if you lose this, you're going to be lost forever. You're going to be his servant forever. And that's a scary thing when you're looking at maybe what the odds are that you're facing right now. I know that. I see people that go through that all the time. And then the Philistine, being the devil that he was, stood up there and listened to this arrogant, sorry, low-down dog. He said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. I want you to understand that Satan and all of his emissaries are bold and they're arrogant and they're blasphemous and they are standing there defying the armies of the living God and God himself this morning and they are hoping that you will listen to that noise, listen to that racket and believe that they can actually defeat God and scare you into submitting. That's what's coming down the pipe right now. The devil is arrogant enough to try to make you believe that he is stronger than God and the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you if you're saved. And when Saul and Israel, here's the king of Israel, and Saul and all Israel heard the words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid, 
Christian, I want you to understand, do you remember the hole that God pulled you out of when you got saved? Do you remember the wonderful things that he has done for you and your family and your life, the miracles that he has performed in front of you? And now the devil's going to come along and scare you half to death on top of that? After you've seen what God is capable of doing and he's going to get up there and defy God and defy the armies of God, defy the people of God, and then you're going to let him just run his mouth and shrink back in terror. Don't do it. Don't buy into that. It's a lie. It's a lie from hell. Now David was the son of that Ephratite of Bethlehem Judah whose name was Jesse and he had eight sons and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul and the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul in the battle and the names of the three sons that went into battle were Eliah and Amenadab and Shammah and David was the youngest a kid a teenage boy that the Bible referred to as ready most teenage boys do not like to be called ruddy because it means you still have rosy cheeks. I remember a kid that went to our school that had rosy cheeks all the time and the other boys just rode him incessantly about that, about being a kid, looking like a kid. We don't want to look ruddy cheeked and small. We want to look tough and grizzled and all that. But you know what? Maybe you can't this morning. Maybe you don't feel like it this morning because you've been run over enough. And you feel about as tough as a, a kid right now facing what you're facing. And David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself for 40 days. Please understand this, that until you make your stand and until you fight that devil, he is never going to leave you alone. He's going to keep after you and after you and after you. That's the way a bully works. A bully will not leave you alone till you finally stand up to him and let him have it. And the devil is a bully. And a lot of you feel bullied this morning. I know you do. <clears throat> and Jesse said to David his son, Take now for your brethren this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp to the brethren and carry these ten cheeses to the captain and look uh, and, uh, how your brethren are doing and take their pledge. So here was a shepherd. Here was a shepherd that is getting ready to go and fight the biggest foe of all. We need shepherds in the pulpit that will give people some encouragement this morning and give them the word of God and tell them the way it really is. And Saul and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistine. And so David rose up early in the morning. Teenage boy now. And left the sheep with a, with a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. They weren't going to do anything. They went charging down halfway down that hill, shouting like they were going to battle. And they were going to stop right on that hill because there was a 9 foot 6 inch, 475 pound man waiting for them at the bottom. Telling me, send me the best you got. I'm going to whip him and then you're going to be my slave. So they were, put, they were going through the motions again, and maybe again you're going through the motions. You've even shouted for the battle, but you know you're not going to do anything right now because you feel afraid and you feel defeated. And it said, David left the carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words, and David heard them this time. All of these men, these seasoned warriors and all were running in terror. And he was like a 14, they said he was about 14 years old. 14 year old boy standing there and he listens and he hears what's going on. But you know what? He hadn't lived long enough to be ignorant. That's true. 
Mama used to tell me there ain't no fool like an old fool. And if you live long enough and you listen to the wrong things and you let the devil tell you stuff, you're going to get more ignorant than a teenage boy. No offense to teenage boys. But here David walked with God. He talked with God. He trusted God. He, he prayed all the time. He wrote songs. He sung. He walked with God. And so something like this coming along doesn't bother him. It doesn't scare him because he, he's, he hasn't grown old enough and calloused enough and ignorant enough to where it would bother him. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches, give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. Here's a challenge to a 14-year-old boy. You go up there and you kill Goliath, the king will give you riches, he'll let you marry his daughter, and your family's household will be tax-free forever. The tax-free thing would be enough to get me to charge after him. <laughs> David spoke to the men that stood by him and said, What shall be done to the man that kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach for Israel, from Israel? We Christians have often been made a reproach by the devil because we listen to him yelling and we listen to him screaming and we watch the news and we think there's no hope for nothing left in this world anymore and it's all doomed and it's all going to hell and, and the devil is sitting there laughing and here we are, we are in the army of the living God and we're running scared to death. David was so indignant, he asked the soldiers a question. And he said this, let me get my spot here. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David didn't look at how big that man was. David didn't look at the armor that that man was wearing. He just said, who in the devil is that that he would stand up against the armies of the living God? Today, it's time to grow a spine. It's time to get a backbone made out of titanium instead of jelly. Look at all the stuff that we're facing as a nation. Look at all the stuff we're facing as a community, as a church, and as an individual. The attack that everybody is under. It's no time to run. It's no time to hide. It's time to grow a spine and look him in the eye and go, Just who do you think you are that you would defy the armies of the living God? Yes. That's what we need. And the people answered him after this manner, So shall it be done to the man that killeth them. And Eliab the oldest brother heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And people are going to get mad at you when you do that too. They're going to go, you're nothing but a peon. You don't have any education. You don't have any money. You don't have any abilities. And you think you're going to do something against the forces of evil coming at you? Who, who are you? You're just, you're nothing. And the devil will tell you that you are nothing. The devil will tell you, you got a past. you got a criminal record. Heck, three-fourths of the church here has got to either been a, uh, got a criminal record or the rest of them were cops and put them in jail. I met half the congregation behind bars. And I was on the other side of it. I'll let y'all guess which side, okay? <laughs> I had a lieutenant from another jurisdiction used to come to my office at the sheriff's office and he'd stand there and he'd, it was your daddy, Kenny. He would stand there and grin at me and start laughing. And I'd go, what's so funny? And he smiled and he said, I always expected 
to see you in jail, but not on this side of the bars. <laughs> He'd get me every time. The devil will tell you that, that you've got a past, that you've, you, you've had problems, and you've got problems now, and who are you? You can't do anything for God. They told David, they said, and, what, and with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the naughtiness of your heart, for you've come down to look at the battle. Well, David still did not stumble. He did not step backwards one inch. He looked at them and said, what did I do? He said, is there not a cause? Folks, there is a cause. It's way, way past time that we stood up and fought against the onslaught that's coming against our families, that's coming against us, that's coming against our church, coming against our nation. It's time. You are a, a soldier in the army of the living God. You have nothing to fear. Please understand, you have nothing to fear. And he turned from him toward another and spoke after the same matter. And the pe people answered him after the former matter. And so Saul went to David. And David said, I killed a lion and I killed a bear when they came after my sheep. And said that your servant, in verse number 36, your servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine or heathen is what he's trying to say, shall be as one of them, seeing that he hath defied the armies of the living God. He had to go, a 14-year-old boy had to go to the king. Nobody else would do it. Nobody else would accept the challenge. And David said, I ain't scared of him. I'm not afraid of him. I had a lion and I had a bear come and try to take my sheep, and I killed them with my bare hands. And he said, this heathen Philistine will be no different from the rest of them. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul, scared to death, said, Go, and the Lord be with you. What a coward. The king of Israel that stood above everyone else told a 14-year-old boy, Yeah, go get him. Go, go right ahead. David, Saul armed David with his armor. And he put on a helmet of brass over his head and armed himself with a coat of mail. And David girded the sword on his armor. And he essayed to, to go, for he had not proved it. And David said to Saul, I can't go with this stuff. I can't use this stuff. What did Saul give him? What did the world try to give you? A human reasoning. Logic. All kinds of things to attack the forces that are coming against you when not one of those weapons will do one earthly bit of good. Put off all of the stuff that the world is telling you that you need to do to defeat the enemies that's coming after you and put your trust in the Lord and let him handle it. He took his staff in his hand, took a stick in his hand and chose five smooth stones out of the brook, put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a script, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. He didn't cower back. He walked forward. And you need to get up this morning in the midst of all the problems that you got, and you walk forward in the face of what's coming after you, and you do it without backing up, and you do it without fear. And the Philistine came and drew near to David, and the men that bear the shield went before. The man that bare the shield went before him. Great big man got a shield because here comes a 14-year-old boy with a slingshot. Tell you, that's what a coward the devil really is. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, but he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistines said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. First thing that's going to happen when you stand up and make your stand against what's coming at you and what's attacking you, it's going to laugh at you, it's going to mock you, it's going to make fun of you. The devil will. 
And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh into the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. And here's the answer from a 14-year-old boy that walked with God and had faith and knew the right thing to say. He looked at him and he said, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. You come to me with all of the doubts, with all of the fears, with all of the problems, with all of the impossibilities. You come to me with all of those things, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts of the gods of the armies of Israel who you have defied. That's what he told him. He said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I'll smite you and I'll take your head from you and I'll give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth and that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. He said not only am I going to kill you but I'm going to leave all of y'all for the buzzards to pick. That's what he said. He said, I'm going to leave your carcasses for the fowls of the air that everybody may know that there is a God in Israel. You want somebody to know that there is a God in America? Then start acting like there is one. Start acting like a Christian. Make your stand and don't back down from all the foolishness. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, is what he told him. And all the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. I'm a gun nut. I've been shooting since I was four years old. Yeah, that would be child abuse nowadays. <laughs> I'm a collector. I love fooling with them. I just a gun nut. But of all the powerful weapons that I have, I can't stop an attack of the devil with it. If it was, I'd bring some of my big stuff up in here on Sunday morning. We'd have a shooting gallery and we'd be going at it with the devil. But I can't do it. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. The weapons that we have to have are spiritual. And it don't matter how big you are, how little you are, how dumb you are, how smart you are. You have access to those weapons and you can defeat him today with what you got. Just what you got. Don't worry about, I'm going to get myself straight and then I'm going to serve God. And I'm going to do this and then I'm going to serve God. No, he wants you to come just like you are and use what you have.